So I'm here to give you the best possible information that I can on writing and being published and really promoting yourself and how to promote yourself. And really, a lot of it really is, um, there's lots of techniques and strategies that work in marketing that can really help that have helped me with with my books over the years, but and that have helped uh, many authors over the last eleven years, as well. Um, but also, I w really want to help with um, people's confidence as well, because the more confident we are, the the more likely we are to follow through. And Jim Rohn calls it the law of diminishing intent. Do you never know when you have a feeling that you think, yes, I'm going to do that, and then if you don't act on it. And then you let it, you kind of let it slip. Well, this is, it's really about taking action and implementing action. Um, and that's really important with mental health as well, is that if we can refocus our mind, reprogram our mind, then we can improve our health, improve our focus, and improve our well being. So that's what I want um, for everyone as well. And we have a free copy of uh, Unlimited Confidence home study course. What I'll do, I'll just talk a little bit about myself and then I'm just going to ask you um, to each talk and introduce yourselves and just say why you're here and um, what you'd like to get out of it. Is it more writing or marketing or promotion? Um, my guess is it's mainly more marketing and promotion because I know um, most of the people here um, tend to write quite a lot. Um, but I'm here to, to, to do what I said, which is help with both. Um, but it will be more marketing driven, I think, and more promotional driven because that's probably the most benefit. I've um, got some products here that I've developed, some ho home study courses. One is how to write a book and stop procrastinating, which is a kind of visualization exercise. To cause some, So many times I get people uh, emailing me, probably once a week, someone will say, um, I'm thinking of writing a book, how should I do it? Or I've been thinking of emailing you for five years about writing a book, but I've not got around to it because you know, they've got the fear. So if you've got the, the writing bug and you're halfway there and it's really about promoting yourself. So, um, and also a different type of writing. So it's also not just to, it's great and cathartic to write what comes in your head and you know, write about your experiences and your emotions, but it's also fun to uh, look at writing for an audience so think about your audience first and you know, imagine that you're writing an advert or something and, um, about what you're going to, going to write um, and then you know, look for a market first. So there's lots of ways with the internet, for example, where we can do a Google search and Google keyword search and look at Google and then look at Amazon. So we can look at our competition before we write a book and find our market first as well. So there's kind of three different ways of writing there. And um, the most successful one in selling is to look for the market first. But I'll be going through that in, in, in great detail o over the next three days. So just to tell you a little bit about my own background, I'm 37 now. So when I was 17, um, I went through, uh, actually I'll just sit down and just for uh, maybe five minutes and just explain what I went through when I was 17 because I think it's quite important um, to let you know that I've kind of um, you know, had mental health experience too. So when I was 17, I really went through a manic episode but I didn't really know what was happening. So um, I had... I took a couple of ecstasy tablets and I never really came down and um, lost my sleep. And then I thought I became Euro head of the European Hardcore Committee. Mm -hmm. So I thought I could make um, love to everyone on earth, every woman on earth, and create world peace telepathically. And it was quite a good feeling. Mm -hmm. and, but then I became kind of paranoid. So I thought a nuclear war was going on and I was the only person in the world that could stop it. And as I got less and less sleep, um, I kind of described mania as it's something, there's, there's kind of something magical about it, but at the, at the back of your mind, you know that it's dangerous. It's a bit like the Mona Lisa painting, which is very beautiful, but 
there's kind of something wrong about it because she's not got any eyebrows. So I had this manic experience, um, all these strange thoughts going on, um, and you know, it got really intense for six weeks. I thought I was playing a computer game and I was actually in a psychiatric ward and then I had a realization, oh my God, I'm in a psychiatric ward. The only way I'm ever going to get better is to psychoanalyze myself so I can become the, the Jason Pegler that I always wanted to be, the successful Jason Pegler that I had in my mind. And then I wanted to at the same time I had an epiphany, I looked at everyone else in the ward, there was like 25 people sat watching some morning TV uh, and I felt humiliated for being in there and what I wanted to do is to somehow spend the rest of my life stopping the humiliation that other people with mental illness feel because um, until that moment in time uh, being in a loony bin was a kind of joke with my friends that we would say oh you end up in a loony bin in Coney Hill, it was a derogatory remark mm -hmm. and for me, the worst thing was the, the, the stigma, you know, the humiliation of really going back into society after having these mad experiences. Oh, there's Jace, knowing that people were saying things not to my face, but not to me. Um, but, um, and then what really, I wrote a film script about a year or two later, and that kind of helped a little bit. Um, that helped quite a lot, but it wasn't really until I started right. Um, I had four or five manic episodes spent a year in uh, psychiatric wards and two years suicidal. And what the problem was really that I was kept self-manifesting my mental illness. So I kept having a negative mindset and um, you know, embracing, not embracing the fear. So just um, feeling the pain and self-manifesting it and, and feeling sorry for myself in some ways. And what really helped me was when I wrote A Can of Madness, it, it really did change my life and it was um, this, I started writing this in July 98 and I wrote for two weeks, showed it to two friends at the time, two uh, girlfriends at the time and they had bipolar as well and they said wow that's a, the best thing I've ever read because I feel exactly the same way the stigma and I'd only written about a thousand words. Um, so for two years I kind of, I knew mentally that I was strong enough to get over it somehow but I didn't know how. Um, and then I wrote in, in October 2000, I wrote for, I had a kind of another epiphany really. I was, I was reading, my last episode was in April to June 2000 and I was reading Nelson Mandela's Walk to Freedom and I just thought this guy's been through so much and I'm sat here feeling suicidal, I just better snap out of it because this guy's been through more than I have and I'm sat here feeling sorry for myself. Um, so and it, that kind of gave me hope and what really helped was just writing this autobiography and, and it was like drawing a line in the sand and then I could look, look at myself in the mirror and accept who I was. And then I just um, managed to get a grant from mine to self-publish my autobiography and it, that gave me a lot of comfort, confidence. And then I met a guy who was a printer and he said, why don't you set up a publishing company you could help people? And I went to conferences all around the UK, so I went to like 150 conferences in 12 months, and I would get a free place as a service user um, at a conference, and I would go and um, sell copies of my book there, have a stand, and I would just sell them. If it, if it was a patient who would look like they were on lots of medication, I would just give them a copy. If they say, I happen to have 10 pounds, I'd give them a copy. If it was a member of staff, I would make them buy one and try and make them buy 10 for their department immediately. So, um, so it kind of naturally, I just had a passion and I think people felt it. Uh, and then I met other people said, I've written a book or I'd like to write a book and no one else would publish them. So all the mental health charities started putting people in touch with us. And um, three years later, I was thinking this guy, Andrew, he just like, he's got three children and he just doesn't, he's like on his email at five o'clock in the morning like me, but he never gets tired. And I thought, what's going on? And then he, three years later, he told me I've been hypermanic since I was 16. So I thought, ah, you know, like, likewise. So that was, um, you know, and he's, he's still there helping 11 years later, you know, which is fantastic, really. Um, but I went through a real transformation in, in the year 2000. I read kind of three books that changed my life. So I read um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. 
uh, Tony Robbins and Limited Power and The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle. So I began a personal development journey. So what I managed to do was to kind of, the, the writing kind of snapped me out of feeling sorry for myself um, and put my life into perspective so I wasn't embarrassed about who I was, so I could know myself, I could, I could like um, move forward and kind of live my life again, if you like. And the publishing kind of helped because um, it, it gave me a purpose, it gave me a mission. And then I just started getting into the personal development quite heavily in all Tony Robbins. Um, and in 2005, I went to a Tony Robbins seminar and it completely transformed my life. There was 11,000 people there over four days and um, it gave me the confidence to get super fit again and I came off medication in liaison with my psychiatrist and I've been counselling him ever since really. So, um, you know, so that was um, really helpful. Uh, and, but the personal development is what I really want to get you excited about mm -hmm. in these three days as well. So it's, it's writing, which um, I think most of you are pretty passionate about anyway. Um, there's publishing and promotion and, and personal de uh, development is a crucial ingredient to that as well because that's ultimately um, what can push, push you as a person to, to make you uh, a better person, a, a happier person, a success, more successful person. Um, you know, someone, you know, it, it just happier within yourself and we'll be doing a lot of that. Some I'll be talking about and, and some we'll, we'll be just kind of, um, you know, doing as well. Um, because it's really in the moments of decision and action that makes a massive difference in, in our lives, you know, and it's about, you know, r really where you focus on in life is, is where you end up. And I would please urge you all to take as many notes as you can even now while I'm talking because the, the more notes you take throughout these three days the more you'll remember and in, in, the, in the, big, the biggest peak of a state that you'll be in. It's really really important and I'll also give a prize to the person who takes the most notes as well so um, so, start, so um, please start writing. That's great. I'd like us to do a, a little bit of one or two exercises just to get ourselves in a bit of a peak state. Um, can we just all start smiling, please? I just want everyone to smile for like, uh, and then I want us to start laughing, so. <laughs> just laugh out loud, just laugh out loud. <laughs> Creates more muscles in your face, gives you more energy, makes you happier. <laughs> I like myself, 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 I like myself. Now I love myself, 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 I love myself. So we're gonna do a writing exercise. Everyone's gonna start off with the same sentence. And you can write um poetry, um you can write in any genre, poetry, fiction or whatever. Um, autobiography, whatever it is. The sentence is, the future is so bright, I'm wearing shades. The future is so bright, I am wearing shades. Yeah. Great, so if we could just all write for five minutes and then s and see what we come up with. Right, the, f the future is so bright, I'm wearing shades. Well, 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 who would have thought it? Talk about blinded by the light. And I would have thought it was high time. Ha, oh, that's the pun. Trouble is, with the equivalent to a monsoon starting in April, going through to July and beyond, dark skies, where is that happy, happy sun? We all want it to pour down on us. How about using imagination then? Turn negative thoughts away, ignore that interminable rain rain and switch on. Focus, focus, and like a steady steam train, chug chug and achieve. Keep those shades, those blinkers on. The more you achieve, the more you will want to <laughs> The more you achieve, the more you will want to achieve. 
Maybe the shades are colourful. Wouldn't it be wonderful to buy some glasses which produce a kaleidoscope of colours in front of the eye? A happy vision. Thank you. This year is going to be the best year ever. The unthinkable is happening, the forgotten, the never. People predicted their ending looking at the blank page. In fact, it's the changing, the coming golden age. You have to be optimistic, forget realistic. It's going to be incredible, forget, uh, forget cataclysmic. And you don't have to pay attention to religion or science. The point is for freedom, not global compliance. This year brings beauty for many to see. To break free from the barriers, the mind must be free. Wow. Yeah. The future is so bright I'm wearing sunglasses. Dark sunglasses of Ireland, the mass of flowers, light and shade and paint. Fade the painter of light, the midnight of flowers, morning dew of poem. Poetry in blue, sunglasses in the fifties, the days of poem and sun. In the honey land, bluebell is godly, the modern poem of light. A white flower in sunlight, the heaven light. Flowers of sun and shade. Days of poem, sunlight, and, and God's land. Mm. Sounds pretty good to me. The future is so bright, I'm wearing shades. At last, I feel a sense of relief that I'm not cocooned by the constraints of pleasing everybody else and conforming to the stereotypes of my former career. I feel like I'm on the verge of something really great. It's scary as well as exciting, but it gives me a sense that at last I could be in charge of my own destiny rather than coasting along in an existence not of my making. Being honest about my situation, the cause and effect, and my recovery, has been an enlightening experience, and I now have a strong desire to capitalise on my experience, turning it into a career where I can share my experiences and my knowledge with others, and to effect change within an industry so that others may not have to endure my pain, and to show the world that there really is a different way. The future is so bright, I'm wearing shades. Beyond the bounds, I'm feeling free, happy to be here, enjoying the atmosphere, alive in the moment, wondering what's going to happen next. I'm alone in the darkness of my mind, waiting for light to enter. A stray sunbeam, a ray of perception, maybe something will strike a chord and create an inspired thought something to determine where my mind will move on to next. But I have no fear, I'm alive, the worst is past. Those years of despair and distraction, of loneliness and being isolated in thought and deed. It was a time of preparation, time for reflection and ideas to percolate through the compartments in my mind. Happiness and laughter all around, but in a fog in the distance. Some nebulous horizons of achievements yet to be. So how to travel and move on to consider the possibilities of getting there. A floating cloud, a rising rainbow, a sinking sun or a March moon glimmering. A tidal river, a canal boat cruiser, a solid dredger or an ocean going liner. Some kind of pleasure craft is what I'd choose. A punting boat, a Venetian canal, sun beaming down and music gently playing, small birds calling and flags flying. So much going on, I'd need to choose. Which direction next? Who to listen to? What to wear to complement my purple shoes and lime green dress with a lilac shawl and violet shades? I know a fascinator in white to adorn golden tresses. The future is so bright, I'm definitely wearing those shades. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> the future is so bright, I'm wearing shades. But really, I'm not. These glasses aren't tinted, not in the physical sense. But what I say is what others is not what what I see is not what others see. From the time I wake up, my world, my life as I live it, is tinted by my eating disorder. Even things not related to eating food and weight are different for me than they are for other people. 
Let's say I'm walking my dog, Puzzle. Puzzle. <laughs> I worry about what others think of me. Hey, wasn't that the crazy skinny lady with the dog? What happened to her? She ain't skinny anymore. She must be a pig. Look at her waddle down the street. So, I turn up my headphones real loud to try to get rid of these thoughts. I listen to Talking Heads, their album called Remain in Light, which I call my starvation music. The beat drives on and I try to walk fast. Puzzle stops to poop, and I'm reminded that shit in life is unavoidable. I take out, I take out my little baggie to pick it up, telling myself that I mustn't turn with my back to oncoming cars because when I bend, everyone can see my butt. I tell myself I am crazy. No one cares what I look like, not really. They only want clean yards. They don't want shit in their lives. That's the whole problem, though. Whether it gets tossed in the dumpster or flushed down the toilet, people don't want ugliness. They want to censor it out. When I write, I do not censor. My writing disturbs people, but I consider it my job to disturb, to shake up the world. I want to write something that another person may read and then never be the same. I am told, no, you mustn't write about real stuff. Talk about recovery. Talk about cutesy puppies and kittens. You know something? Cute puppies and kittens poop at one heck of a lot. <laughs> I'm told that I shouldn't write colorfully, that I should leave out details, that I was trained to tell it like it is. I refuse to compromise the quality of my writing for the sake of avoiding doing this thing called, not doing this thing called, triggering other people. The truth is that anorexia nervosa is the most fatal of all mental illnesses. Only a small fraction are able to truly free themselves from an eating disorder. But I should try to think about how I can change the world with my writing. Right now, people don't even know what eating disorders are. These illnesses are not caused by the fashion industry. It goes so much more deeper than that. To explain, to explain why I strive to be ridiculously thin isn't easy because although many people want to lose weight, the way I see things, the difference between having, being a person on a diet and having an eating disorder that takes over your life, it has been so difficult. People want to shake me. They say, why do you do this to yourself? Why do you want thinness more than you want to stay alive? I want to tell them, yes, that desire over life itself is anorexia in a, in a nutshell. <laughs>